Right, the question we're going to be asking ourselves is, what is a function? Now, you will be used to function notation, i.e. using f of x or g of x is equal to some function of x, like x cubed. Okay, this is a function. Um, f of x is equal to sine x. You'll be used to using that. And you'll be used to using uh, e to the x by now as well, and log x. So these are all examples of functions. But what makes a function? Y, for example, uh, is this not a function? Okay. Why can I not write it in function notation? Well, there are things that we need to understand when dealing with functions. And if we go back a step, so that when I'm looking at a function, you might want to think of it as a function machine. So, for example, um, I get my x, I put it into the function machine, which in some case might cube it, okay? And then I get out x cubed. Okay, so this is my function machine that's working here. Okay, you can make it look a little bit stupid if you like. Okay, here's my function machine. This is what ha is happening to the x's that I put through. So if I put through the number 2, for example, it goes through the function machine and it becomes 2 cubed, which is 8. Okay, so that for every input that I put in, I get a single output. So one input, one output. Now the problem with x squared plus y squared is 3 is that this is a circle. Okay? Centered at the origin, okay, with radius root 3. Okay? Now if I put in my um, like x is 1, for example, here is x is 1 then what I get out are actually two possible values for y. So I've actually got two outputs. So for a single input, I've got two outputs. And this means that it's not considered to be a function. So these are all functions. Okay. So any curve that effectively goes back on itself, allowing for two possible values of y for a single value of x, is not a function. Okay, so that's a very basic definition of what a function means. Now, of course, we've also got different types of functions. Um, these are different types in, you can just see from the graph, the y equals x, f, x equals x cubed, looks like this, okay, and f of x equals sine x looks like this. Now, there is a direct comparison here, okay, and something that you need to be aware of, that for a particular value of y, for example, if I just draw any line going horizontally across, this graph, I'm always going to get just one value of x. Okay? But if I do it for this curve, I get many values of x. This is a curve that is known as 1, 1. And this curve would be known as many, 1. So what would f of x equals e to the x be? Would it be 1, 1 or many, 1? Well, if you remember what the curve looks like, is the curve of e to the x, so that any horizontal line that I pu push across the graph, I'll only get one value of x, okay? So this is 1, 1. Now, on top of this, okay, for these specific graphs and others, 
they are valid over a certain domain. So what we have here is that if I looked at f of x is equal to x cubed, for example, then I could um, put restrict it to a certain domain. And what I mean by that is I can allow it to be only certain values of x. So let's say um, I'm only accepting values of x that are less than or equal to, um, but x is greater than or equal to minus 2, but less than 2. So that when I sketch the curve, um, we're going to look like something like this. So we have a solid dot for when it, x can be equal to that point at 2, but an open dot, a hollow dot, when it cannot be equal to that. Okay, And this is called the domain, the values over which x, uh, where the function is valid. So, in effect, if you had a curve, let's say, looking like this, then it is between these two values that we refer to the domain, the domain of the function. And for this one, for this particular curve, we have what is called the range of values. The range of values looks at the range of values for which the curve exists in the y direction. Okay, so I know what ones they exist from the x's, but in the y's, it's going between minus 8 and 8. So the range in this case <coughs> would be minus 8 is less than or equal to f of x is less than 8. And this would be considered the range. So on our little diagram here, for this generic curve, this is known as the range. Now, it's the notation here that I want to get very clear. OK, so if I get rid of that. Now, what do I mean by this notation? Well, remember that this is my x-axis, and effectively this is the y-axis, which I'm representing with f of x. So f of x can go between minus 8 and 8. <coughs> and because we had a solid dot here, x could be equal to 2, so f of x could be equal to minus 8. But remember, x could, could not be equal to 2, it had to be less than 2, so f of x has to be less than 8. So that's why we have this. Now let's look at another example, which might make it a little bit clearer. Let's look at f of x is equal to e to the x. Well, we've already sketched this once. There's e to the x. Okay, now e to the x exists for all values of x. If you get your calculator and you just choose a value of x, no matter how large or how small, be it zero, a million, whatever, e to that number will give you an answer on your calculator. Obviously, the larger the number gets, e to that number will be very large for the, and probably too large for the calculator to deal with. But essentially, there will be a value. So the domain is represented by all values of x. There are none that are excluded. And for this, we use a notation saying that x can belong. This is the mathematical symbol for belong to 
what we term as the real numbers. So it's all numbers that are along this line, okay? The real numbers. Any number you like, okay? Well, the range are the values of y, effectively, that it exists for. Now, e to the x does gets very, very close to zero, but never reaches it, and never passes past the x-axis. <clears throat> so f of x, the function, is always above the x-axis, and so must always be greater than zero. Okay? So this is a very, very brief introduction to what is a function, uh, the idea of one one and many one, and the idea of the domain and the range. I've rushed over it a bit. I will explain and go through more examples of domain and range in the next video. Okay?